everybody join in this melody. That's the only way we're gonna be free. Everybody sing it this sweet refrain. Sing this melody till it gets in the brain. Well, I'm talking to you, Muslim, Christian, and Hebrew. Anything to do, we got to unite, or else we are through. Everybody sing it this sweet refrain. Sing this melody till it gets in your brain. Africa, the people are getting together. They even united in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Angola. And boomers vision will light the world over from Cape to Cairo, one Africa. Everybody singing this sweet refrain. Sing this melody till it gets in your brain. It is said that one of the best kept secrets of the Caribbean is the beautiful country of Belize. country that we are in now received Minister Farrakhan well, but it was not without the uh, reservations of those in power. Minister Farrakhan was received throughout the Caribbean very well by the people of the Caribbean, but it was the governments of those countries that he visited on this first phase of his tour that showed some reservation. Here in Belize that for many years was known for its beautiful mahogany wood that has been stripped from the country now, the country still has a beauty that is unmatched anywhere in the Caribbean. It is the only English-speaking country in the Caribbean that is predominantly black. And it was here in the country of Belize that Minister Farrakhan received one of his best receptions of the Caribbean tour. Everybody join in this melody. That's the only way we're gonna be free. Everybody sing it this sweet refrain. Sing this melody till it gets in your brain. Well, I'm talking to you, Muslim, Christian, and the Hebrew. And here we are at uh, the place called Chunatovich, which is the ruins of an old Mayan temple. Uh, this uh, sacred place of the original settlers of this part of the world, of course, um, is uh, filled with meaning for us today. So as we come to Belize, we must pay homage.
homage to the original owners of this part of the earth. And uh, in this day and time, we must lift the Indian and the black and all oppressed people back to their rightful place in the sun. Like most Belizeans, I've heard of Minister Farrak and, and heard of his eloquence and his ability to analyze what's happening in the third world and the problems in America. But I found it unbelievable that the man was so inspired. He must be inspired to be able to understand exactly what's happening in our environment. And not only understand it, but relate to all different levels of people and explain precisely what it means and what the impacts are. It was a real pleasure and an education, not only for myself, but I'm so for whom I was here. Thank you. Lifting up my own people because I feel the pain of Palestinians who are deprived of their homeland. I didn't come to Belize to meddle in the affairs of Belizeans, but if I see suffering in Belize, I am your brother, flesh of your flesh, blood of your blood, and bone of your bone. So when you ache in Belize, I ache in Chicago. Therefore, I should come and see whatever I can do to help my own people. Well, I guess you agree with that. Beloved brothers and sisters, what I want to say at the very beginning of this lecture, and I will try to make it as brief and to the point as possible, that the only thing that distinguishes us from the animals is that we are possessed with the ability to gain knowledge, wisdom and understanding which allows the human being to master all of God's creation. That's a very heavy responsibility. So the responsibility on every human being, as you come out of the darkness of your mother's womb, you come into the light of a world filled with knowledge above your head, beneath your feet and around you and it is your and my responsibility to ingest knowledge, digest knowledge and with knowledge grow to master the forces of our own being which can be destructive and then go on in our growth to see our humanness and then go on in our growth to become one with our creator so that we become perfect reflections of the divine will. Man can grow from sperm to God. I'm going to say that again. Man can grow from sperm to God. Just a minute, Farrakhan. Are you saying that man is God? Yes, I'm saying that and then some. I am saying as the scripture says, ye are all God's children of the most high God. In Arabic we say, Ashadu and la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God but the one true God, Allah. This doesn't mean that there are not other gods, other forces, other powers, but we recognize no power that we are worthy to bow down to, but the power that created all other powers. Now, if man can grow to become master, and we are not masters of self or anything around us, then something has failed or come in between our feeding from the universe and its truth and misguided man so man is an underdeveloped being and when i say man i'm speaking of man and woman the whole planet is filled with underdeveloped human beings who have not reached the stage where they can even say I am a human being for when you don't feel
feel the pain of another human being. When you exalt your color and your color makes you think you are superior simply because you are lighter or lightest or brightest or white, you are sick. Is that right? If another human being feels that he or she is inferior because they are darker, their hair is kinky, their nose is short, and their lips are thick, and the blacker they are, they think the worse off they are, that people is sick. So you got sick people all over the planet that are oppressing other people because you ain't the right color, you ain't the right class, you ain't the right caste. You don't have enough education, you got too much, you got too little. You haven't got enough money, you may need more, you got too much. So the whole world is filled with madness. So the Bible closes in the book of Revelation with the talk of four beasts, not human beings, beasts in control of the world and its people. Now you know it's not talking about a lion, a tiger, a bear. It's talking about governments and people of power who use raw power to take from others what they have the power to take regardless of law or right or moral or ethic or principle. That's a beast. You agree? Now let's look at human development. Bear with me just a few minutes. It's very important for us to understand. Dear beloved Muslims who are present and Christians, both the Bible and the Quran talk about Adam. Adam as the progenitor of all human beings. The Bible says God made man, check this out, in his own image and after his own likeness. That should say something very good about all of us. I'm not talking about just man now, because the book said male and female created he them and called their name Adam. Check it out, Reverend. It's there. multiply means and of course it means make more of your kind Adam but that's multiplication on the lower level of multiplication but multiplication says to you look I have given you something take what I have given you multiply it and get a product Multiplier times the multiplicand, and what do you have? What do you have? A product. What is God saying? Adam, you got to produce. If you are on the earth and you are non productive, you have not justified your existence. now, replenish the earth and subdue it. Now, replenish means to repeat 
people the earth with your own kind. But look, look at all this earth out here. Replenish the earth could mean look into the earth. See what wealth I have deposited in the earth for you. I don't know why you want to die and go to a kingdom in the sky when everything that would be in that kingdom is under your foot. If you want gold in the streets, there ain't no gold up there, buddy. It's in the earth. You want pearls? They're in oysters in the depth of the sea. So you got to go down in the earth and the sea and mine all the sea and her treasures and you can build whatever you want on the earth. Subdue the earth. She's here for you to master. But use your wisdom in accord with the divine law and will of the creator and you will never offend God or any other human being in your development of yourself and the earth. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Now the Holy Quran, which is the book of scripture of the Muslims, says it a little differently, but I'd like to throw it out for your analysis. It says that Allah made Adam from black mud and fashioned him into shape. That's very heavy. If he made him from black mud and fashioned him into shape, he uh, was not white. <laughs> I just throw that out for your consideration. Not racial, mind you, just talking about something you need to consider. I'll be back at that in a minute. God, according to the Quran, has no veil between him and Adam. He direct to Adam, he gives Adam wisdom and he makes Adam even wiser than the angels. Even though Adam in his first state was a mischief maker that would create bloodshed and create mischief on the earth. And let me say this brothers and sisters, when we are immature mentally and spiritually, we create mischief with knowledge. And our neighbor to the north, my country, tis of them. My country makes mischief with knowledge. Knowledge can be that which brings peace and justice, but knowledge can be used to create mischief and cause the shedding of blood. And if you look at your former colonial masters, the British, the French, the Spanish, the Italians, the Europeans, when they came into Africa, the Caribbean, wherever they found black people or Indian people or brown people, they tried to exacerbate the differences, the tensions, and put one person against another using their color differences, using their language differences, using their cultural differences to create mischief in the land and bloodshed. And while the people were fighting and killing each other, they would come and take it all for themselves and go on and make a heavenly life on earth. That's mystery. But if we can grow man up out of his mischief making, he can become greater than the angels and master all of the forces of nature. Now, that potential does not belong to Caucasians alone. That potential belongs to every human being on this earth, including you. You have the potential, male and female, to become a master of yourself, a master of your environment, a master of the laws that govern nature so that you don't have to complain about anything but your ignorance. Go after 
knowledge, get it? Transform your lives and make believe what you desire it to be. That is up to you. Now while I'm on that point, that Adam was fashioned out of black mud into shape, did you know, brothers and sisters, that many colonial masters, all of them, who mastered us under their rule, set up a system whereby everybody that came under a colonial master would never be able to break the chains of colonialism. So when the colonial master is gone, the colonial mentality will still remain. Let me read something from a book. Here's a book called A History of Belize, A Nation in the Making. I hear that some don't like this book. I had a chance to scan it myself today. I thought it was wonderful. Some people say, we don't want this book, you know, because this book will create hatred, because they talk about white people, bad, you know. And we can't have a society with hatred. Listen, whoever said anything like that, and I don't know whether you did, but if you did, you are a foolish man and a foolish woman. You hear me? Listen! Government leaders, listen! Government leaders, listen! If this is the truth, why hide your light under a bushel basket and lie to the children? need not hate white people if they know the truth. But if white people can look at the truth and the truth is a mirror of their own wickedness, then you give those who read the truth a chance to repent and change so that what was need not necessarily be what is. suffer under colonialism? Did we catch hell? Did the colonial powers give us hell? Did they happen to be white? Well then tell it. And then be on the lookout for a black man who is a colonialist in black skin. Children of the people, when you inform 
the people, they act intelligently. Now look, in this book it says, colonialism is a system of external domination. Under colonialism, all aspects of a society, economic, social, cultural, are controlled by another country. That's a good definition. And I would like to hold that Adam fashion into shape from black mud. I want to throw that out there. I want you to hold that in your mind while we talk about this thing called colonialism. Because 1981 saw Belizean independence. It will be 2,991 before you realize independence if you continue on the path that you're going. Listen to me, please. No, 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 no. Wait, wait now. Hey, brother, why you come down here to talk like this? <laughs> Beloved, listen. I love you like I love my own life. And it would please me to see your brothers up north of you and your sisters strong enough to be a help to you but whether you get help from above or beneath you have the responsibility of helping yourself and you cannot help yourselves if your minds are chained even though the British have said yes you are politically independent yet economically you are bound and wrapped and chained and tied so your political independence and your flag is a mockery until you have spiritual, mental, intellectual freedom and then development, then you strike out and develop your land. Then freedom is a reality and not a word and a concept that we can only sing about, write about, but never ever experience. The colonial master did not want to ever see you free. Did you hear that? The slave master of your brothers and sisters in America did not then and does not now want to see black people free. So if 30 to 40 million of us live in America and are not yet free, and there is no peace corps in the ghetto to help us get free, may I ask you why are they in Guyana to free you and they have not helped your brothers and sisters in America to be free? You better ask that question. Charity does not begin abroad, then comes back home. It starts at home and then it spreads abroad. We can tell what Reagan's policy means abroad because we analyze his domestic policy and his domestic policy toward black people and Mexican people and Arab people and Hispanic people is criminal inside the country. So how could a man who has a criminal domestic policy have a foreign policy that is good for the Caribbean, good for Mexicans, good for Latin people, and good for the children of Africa who are dispersed throughout the world? You've got to think today. And particularly the leaders. Because you can make one or two errors in judgment or mistakes and sentence the people to some kind of death and destruction that it may take generations to undo. And this is why we must pray for you that are in leadership that God guide you and strengthen you to make the right decisions. And in my judgment, the right decision is not to sell off Belizean land to any blood sucker who comes in that has a dollar.
Listen. A colonial master wants to dominate your minds thoroughly and completely. So, they set up the destruction of all institutions that you have and they build institutions that shape your attitude and your habits. Habits and attitudes that they can continue to control you long distance. So when you kill a skunk, the skunk is dead but the stench remains for a long time. So here the British are not in power. in power, very much so. I was in Uganda one day with Idi Amin, and Idi Amin this day told the people, we have conquered the British. And everybody around Idi Amin laughed funny to them. We have conquered the British. I had just met a beautiful 19-year-old black girl the day before with short hair. And when I told her she was beautiful, she begged my pardon and told Then you are practicing. 
practicing a dirty religion, but you're using a good man's name as a shield. Now listen. Christianity, as it was taught by Jesus, you don't have it yet. If you had the real teachings of Jesus, you would have eyes and you could see. But you got eyes and you can't see. You got ears and you can't hear. Got a tongue and can't speak. You are divine people, but you function on the level of the lower animals. So if you have not been raised from the dead to a living perpendicular standing on the square, you haven't met Jesus yet. I'm, I'm being very raw, but I want you to reason with me. Any man who will not teach, treat you right, cannot be expected to teach you right. Now, why don't the colonial powers tell the truth? Religion was not to bring you closer to Jesus. Religion was to make you more pliable as a tool of service for your colonial masters. So they corrupted religion to serve colonial purposes. So now the colonial master is gone, but colonial religion remains. Listen, Reverend. Listen, Reverend. Wait a minute. Anytime a black man is in religion, hear me now, and feel that man cannot love God who created him black and hate himself at the same time. How did you get to hate yourself? It's easy when you understand. When the master painted Jesus, the most noble being of the book, he painted him white and gave him sometimes blonde hair, sometimes he was brunette, but always white. And then told you and me, this is the son of God. When you see the son, you have seen the father. For the father is in the son and the son is in the father. They are one. So when we in our ignorance looked at this image of a Caucasian, we said, mm, Jesus is really beautiful. I wish that I looked more and more like Jesus. Why, God, did you make me black? no trouble God but I busted the comb the other day as I was pulling it through but Jesus could bring his comb straight through God so he must have good hair because he was such a good man so my hair is bad hair because it's kinky so now somebody can get rich selling me something of religion. Look, brothers and sisters, this was purposefully done. Every time you see the cross, you genuflect. Look at this now. Come on, Christians, I'm talking to you. Reverend, I'm talking to you. Father, I'm talking to you. Bishop, I'm talking to you. You're preaching a religion that enslaves the minds of the people you must, in order to be free, go back 
in the church and preach a liberation theology that will make the people see God as he really is, love themselves, and become productive. And it can be done if you preach the book. Y'all all right? Look, brothers and sisters, to make us believe that Jesus and God were white, then they show you a picture of the Last Supper. Everybody at the Last Supper is white. gentleman came to sell my mother the Bible one day and he says look miss we have pictures of the Lord and the Last Supper my mother being a smart West Indian woman from St. Kitts said to the gentleman you mean to tell me that this Last Supper nobody black was there with the mask and you don't even 
even have a chimney. And brother, brothers and sisters, listen. Seriously and in truth, that fosters a spirit of dependency. Whenever you want something, you look to Santa Claus when you're young. When you get a little older, you look to Jesus, but you never look to yourself. And so what happens is, you begin to think that nobody black can do anything worthwhile. If anything good must come, it must come from white people. And so now that you are independent, and Mr. Reagan, the government of the United States or television from America is coming down to you. It, is it good? Is it good because it comes from Caucasians? No matter who it comes from, you must examine it to see, is it good for you? And beloved brothers and sisters, that domination of our minds must be destroyed through the teaching of the truth. Now, if was formed from black mud into shape and was the first creature of the divine supreme being. Then that makes the black people on earth the first in the light of the sun, the first creatures of God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that the black man is the original people of the earth. I don't think that you can dispute that. Because when the learned white anthropologists went to find the origin of man, they didn't go to Europe. They went to Africa. And they found the bones of a black man in East Africa. And the anthropologist said he was 750,000 years old, and they called him Zinjanthropus. Zinj meaning black, Anthropus meaning man. They went back and they researched, and they found more bones of a man at 2 million years old. And they went back and they found more bones of another man, nearly 3 million years old, and he had a father. And as far back as they go, the black man in existence right in Central America even though you may have come after Columbus your original fathers came before Columbus ever knew that he was in existence himself the black man was here in the Western Hemisphere go down or up into Mexico and you see signs there of the same pyramids that are built in Egypt and the head of a black man, make no mistake, a big head of stone of a jet black man with lips look like he's from the Congo. That is to tell you I was here before you got here and I shall be here. When you're gone, for I am Alpha and I am Omega. I am your beginning and I am the ending of all of this wicked society. So I don't mean to say that we should be overly proud of our blackness. But if black people gave civilization to the world, then why not be proud of it? The Aztecs, the Incas, and the Mayans, they are not Caucasian people. They are some of the original people of the earth. They are here in Belize. You, Maya, should honor yourself, respect yourself, develop yourself. Look, Maya, look, Garifuna, look, Creole. If you don't use the land, you will lose it. You came out tonight and you have honored 
me, brothers and sisters. Everywhere I look, the seats are full all the way around in Bel Isle. What did you come out to see tonight? A racist, a bigot, an anti-Semite? No, you came out to see your brother who is standing against imperialism, against colonialism, against exploitation, against racism, against sexism and materialism for the rise of the masses of the oppressed people all over the world. And you heard a part of what I have to say, and in your heart you agree and you know that your brother is right, so the bones are shaking. And now the bones are coming together, but there's no life in the bones yet. So I got to go back to God and say, God, the bones are shaking, but there's no life in them. He says, prophesy to the winds and let the winds blow on the bones. What are the winds? The winds represent war and revolution and hard times blowing from every part of the earth. And now the cry of war is being heard in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, in the eyes of the Pacific. The cry of war is in Guatemala, in Nicaragua. It is south of the border. It is in South America. All around you, the winds are blowing. Bones, get together, bones. Come on, Maya. Come on, Garifuna. Come on, Creole Mestizo. Come on, white Belizean, pull together as one family and lift Belize and look for your bones. They're over in the Caribbean. Don't stop when you think you got your house together. Pull the Caribbean together. Jamaica, Trinidad, St. Kitts, Antigua, St. Vincent, Tobago, Guyana, Suriname. Keep on going. And then look over in Africa. You see the bones rattling in Southern Africa, in Azania, in Namibia, in Mozambique, in Angola, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Kenya, in Guinea. All your people rattling in the valley coming together. And soon we shall stand up an exceedingly great army and we shall say to the big powers of wickedness, sit down, down. In the dust, we shall take it from here with a new world economic order, social order, political order, and spiritual order. For the scripture says there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and the former things shall pass away, and the kingdom of God will come to the earth, and you, the despised, the rejected, the unloved, cornerstone of a new world order. It's your time. Let's get up Belize and do our job. Thank you for listening and may God bless you as I greet you in peace. As-salamu alaykum. The first thing that is important, I'd like to quote Mr. Farrakhan when he said, this is not a charismatic thing. I am not a follower of Mr. Farrakhan per se. I'm a follower of what he says. I respect the man for his lifestyle. I love what he's doing and I recognize the need for what he's doing at this time. And it has inspired me. I have listened to Mr. Farrakhan for some time now. And the more I have listened to him, the more he has done to help me understand myself so that I can make a contribution, the type of contribution that he is talking about today in Belize. Uh, I would continue to grow, I would continue to develop, and I would continue to listen to his words to help inspire me so that I can be of some value to the society. Thank you. Bismillah We are very, very happy and honored to be here in Belize to speak to the people of Belize concerning the spiritual and economic development In our travels, we have found that many of the third world countries who enjoy the 
political independence or in economic dependency. And economic dependency ultimately corrupts spiritual independence and makes a way for a new form of colonialism to overtake these newly politically independent nations. In the United States of America, we are advancing a program that we call POWER. The acronym stands for People Organized and Working for Economic Rebirth. And we believe that it is only when people are organized and working toward their own economic liberation that we will develop what some people called a new world economic order. That new world economic order cannot come until the masses of the people are made productive. And so our message tonight, hopefully, will inspire, stimulate, motivate the Belizeans to greater productivity. I want you to understand and know the time. It's time that we are accepted and respected by both man and mankind. You know, the scripture says that God would choose those that are despised and rejected. And we have been that and cast aside. But brothers and sisters, it's time now that we fall in love with ourselves and with each other. This world has robbed us of a true guide, but it's time, it's time to unite and fight, fight hard for you. Brothers and sisters, we must live for each other and die for each other because that's the only way that we're gonna know the meaning of what it is to be free. Uh, then we'll conquer fear and wipe away all our tears. That's the benefit of our unity. ideas about the level of technology that existed at the time. There are also some things from the past which, though they may not challenge any of our existing concepts, are still puzzling and enigmatic.
Heathrow Airport, London. <laughs> Miss Anna Mitchell Hedges, newly arrived from Toronto, Canada. With her in her green bag, she has brought one of the greatest jewels in the world. A headache for the security men and half a million dollars worth of mystery. In London, the tangled story of her sinister treasure may at last be unraveled. She found it herself in a lost city when she was a girl. Uh, my father was uh, excavating in Central America and British Honduras and we found an old ruin of Maya who he thought had something to do with Atlantis and we uh, excavated for about seven years clearing the ground and then one day we spotted something shining through the stones and that was my 17th birthday so we were full of happiness and joy. London because I want the British Museum to uh, have a test at it and to find out more of its history if we can. Burlington Gardens near Piccadilly Circus. Few of the works of art brought here for analysis at the Museum of Mankind present a challenge as great and as frustrating to the experts as the one Anna Mitchell Hedges unveils in the laboratories in the depths of the building. This is the weirdest gem in the world, the skull of doom. The circumstances of its discovery were bizarre. Its origin is unknown, and its powers, some say, are fatal. The Maya people say it was used to uh, will death or to heal. And like uh, if an old medicine man or witch doctor was getting too old to perform a ceremony, a young man was chosen and both laid in front of the altar and the high priest would perform a ceremony and the old man, knowledge, would go into this young boy and the old man would pass away peacefully but this young boy would get up as a very knowledgeable young man. This crystal skull here has tremendous power but it also gives you a warning that something's going to happen. Anna's father, the Crystal Skull, was the strangest trophy in a lifetime of adventure. Mike Mitchell Hedges, explorer and celebrity of the 20s, was a man who'd take on a crocodile before breakfast and before donning his trousers. Primitive tribes offered him their choicest brides and hailed him as a god. And using only a rod and line, he reeled in some of the great and monstrous creatures of the ocean. In 1924, in British Honduras, he found his buried city, Lubantun. Mitchell Hedges believed it was part of the lost Atlantis. With the local people, the Maya, he cleared the jungle from Lubantun's pyramids and platforms. On the last of these expeditions, he brought Anna, his adopted daughter, to the city. It was on her 17th birthday that they first glimpsed the crystal skull amidst the fallen stones. For days we kept seeing something shining through the stones where the sun was giving and of course we were anxious to uh, get to that one spot. I went to pick it up because I had smaller hands than the other people did and I picked it up and showed it to my father and he just couldn't believe that we found this beautiful crystal skull. As you see it's got all the little lumps that you have on your own head and all the, if you look deep down in the eyes, you'll see sockets down in the eyes. 
and the jaw moves like a human jaw. Almost from the day of its discovery, this, the largest worked gemstone in the world, has been a mystery. Thomas Gann, who was there, and Lady Richmond Brown stayed silent. Mitchell Hedges simply said, it is the embodiment of all evil. But the question remains, was it really an ancient symbol of death that took generations to fashion, or could it have been modern? The only hint lies in an uncannily similar but less intricate skull in the care of the Museum of Mankind in London. It was bought from Tiffany's, the New York jewelers, in 1898, property, it was said, of a Mexican soldier of fortune. Rock crystal is impossible to